guys. Uh, so today I'm just going to give you guys a tour of uh, Master Choice School. Uh, so yes, let's go have a look. So this is uh, the famous Nathan Road in, uh, on Kowloon side. It's a very long road that runs through many of the suburbs in, uh, in Kowloon, in Hong Kong. And this is a little, well you can't really call it a park, but it's a little rest area. Um, so in the beginning we used to come here, usually there's a little bit of a water feature uh, and we used to come here before uh, Master Choice class opened at 5pm we used to come here sometimes myself, Sebastian, we used to come here a couple of hours earlier and we used to stand here in front of the water and sort of uh, do our seal and towel, do some stretches and get ready to go to um, go to the class so so yeah, this is um, this is his building. Uh, so this white one here, as you can see, I don't know if we can make out. Uh, yeah, here we go. That's the um, that's the school there. So it is on the tenth floor. He's actually his house is actually in this same building as well. So his house is on the fourth floor, um, which his wife is still living there and the school is on the 10th floor so yeah so we'll go up and have a look um yeah so this is oh, there's a lot of uh there's a lot of memories you know walking these up walk these <laughs> walk this street across this street you know thousands of times i reckon now in the last uh, last 11 years um and these shops are quite new actually you can see across the street there's some uh, juice stores some snack stores a lot of food stores back in the day 11 years ago it wasn't like this you know you can see that the shoe shop and all that actually it's done it, it looks more modern than it used to be before it was just uh, quite industrial um, this area and this this shop that's closed there this one here is where we used to get our get our dinner from sometimes they got some uh, some very cheap rice rolls that they have there because back in the day we were well actually financially we weren't doing too well um, in the beginning we were in the first year master Choi used to used to charge us uh, 1,000 Hong Kong dollars a week uh, so 4,000 a month and we were making uh, I was myself I was making around 7,000 a month so uh, you know I was paying 60% of that to him for the training so okay so here we go and let's go up So, so we've got to go up these escalators. This one does the um, even numbers, which is what we want. So we go to the tenth floor. So back in the day, in the first uh, three years when I was here, I used to press four. So he actually lives; his wife still lives in the fourth floor, and that's where we train in the first um, in the first three years. Um, and then 2009, I believe. It, well, I forgot when it was. I think it's about 2009 is when we. Um, when we went and got the tenth floor, so it's a it's a bigger space and it doesn't have to be in his living room. Uh, before we used to, you know, we used to train in his living room. The wooden dummy was his living room. His wife used to just stay in the room, and um, and she'd come out. You know, she'd come out uh, six thirty, start cooking. Seven thirty, they start sitting down, and they bring out the fold out table. They bring out um, and they start to they start to eat while we were training away. Yeah, so. Um, that changed all in 2009 so yeah so this is it a very humble Chinese you can see the building is quite old um, yeah so let us go all right and here we have it uh, let's turn the lights on this is where we keep all our shoes. Go and get my shoes. Very super small bathroom. And yeah, here it is. So, here's Seagong himself. Let's give a little bow. So this is actually his, um, his, uh, his ashes is up there. Alongside with his DVDs, his books and his smiling face right there um, so yeah you can see it's a it's a quite a, a um, relatively a small sort of place um, 
maximum we fit in here on very busy days used to be maximum like 30 people you know 25 people 30 people and that would be when we're doing you know when we're doing side slash here yeah, we would have to sort of go half or you couldn't really do chum q because um because you you'd you'd, uh, you'd you'd start touching your neighbor so so yeah you can see some some photos here so i'll show you this kind this is when he made his second dvd we had a we had a dinner to celebrate it um this second dvd called nimtown life um here we are where am i i'm somewhere here um hi there yeah here's the the white guys sitting next to sebastian <laughs> So Sebastian, me and Sebastian, so Seb's like my, my partner in crime, you know, we always came and he's, after me, he's the one that's trained the most with Siegel out of the, out of the non-Chinese guys. Here's some other schools, so here's, here's my school in 2011, he came and did a seminar there, one of, one of a uh, few seminars that he did. This is an uh, Australian school, which all of these instructors except one have already left that school. This is in UK. Canada. Um, now this is this is uh, Ada and Adeng. So I talk about in the videos. I talk about these two ladies a fair bit. The, the taller one on the right, Ada. She's um, she's extremely relaxed. So in in terms of the internal stuff, you know, both these ladies are the most relaxed in this lineage. You know, so um, of course application wise wise is different. You know, because because. They haven't done the sort of techniques and stuff as much as the men, but in terms of seal and tower relaxation, they are the most relaxed. These signs they made, these two signs, this one, this one, their students made for Siegel, um, basically is thanking him for 60 years of, um, over 60 years of teaching, of full-time teaching. This was the VTAA, uh, First World uh, Conference, and this is the second one where Sigun did his demonstration. Photo of Yip Man. So this photo was taken actually by Master Choi himself. This was taken in the fourth floor in his house. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a nice one. I, it, 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 uh, it's a good sort of, one of my favorite photos of Yip Man there. And yeah, here's the, so usually there's a, there's a tea here, actually Siegel's wife still come here. Because usually I come and open, like, like I did today, I come and open up by myself. So Siegel's wife comes and brings tea for us here. Uh, she comes from the fourth floor. Um, this dummy, so this dummy is probably as old as my mum. <laughs> it, it used to be in their living room downstairs, so we moved it up. And when we came up, these poles, so you saw the elevator is very small. So these poles didn't fit in the elevator. So... What we had to do, we had to carry them up from the fourth floor up to the tenth floor, um, which was fun. Here's a storage room, so yeah, you can tidy that up later. <laughs> and yeah, there you have it. Oh, and this is our snack food, and, and these these drawers are packed with food as well. So uh, back in the day, especially Chinese New Year, people used to bring bring snacks and and leave it, or whoever would came from overseas, they would leave snacks here, and Siegel would leave it here, and. Um, yeah, it was good. It was, you know, being here for six hours, you, you, you go through all the nuts, chocolates, etc. Um, this is the gathering we had at Hong Kong for his birthday last year, um, where a few of us did a talk. And this one, of course, a famous uh, photo of, of, um, of Yip Man School in the early 50s. So there's, this is Seagong sitting next to uh, Long Shou. And lock you on the other side of Yip Man. I think here Sigon was 21 years old, so Wong Shong Lung here in the suit. Um, and yeah, sometimes Sigon would, would come and uh, sort of point at different characters and tell us different stories about, about, about people, used to reminisce. At one point, interesting to notice here, yeah, so Lung Shong is actually a very big guy, the one sitting to the right of Yip Man. And Sigmund would point out, you can see in this photo, he actually looks shorter than Yip Man. Yip Man looks taller. And he was pointing out of, of how, because we asked, one time I asked uh, Sigmund, did Yip Man have, you know, that, some energy in his spine? You know, did he have that, that sort of energetic uprightness? And he came to this photo and said, uh, well, you tell me, look at how he's standing, how he's sitting in comparison to Leung Sheng. So he's very, very upright. Um, one cool story he said about this fella, I don't, I don't remember his name, but he was a butcher. Um, he said, Siegel said he was extremely strong. He used to, 
he needs to be able to pick up like um, half a cow, half a, half a, you know, uh, like something like hundred kilos of flesh, and he would just sort of pick it up with both arms and uh, and and put it up on the hooks. And he said he used to be able to to slaughter the cows, which is you know not nice if you're if you're an animal lover like me. But but he used to hold the cows' horns, hold them with two hands by the horns, and sort of flip the cows, and he would flip them to slit their throats. So he was very you've got to be very strong to hold the horns and and flip the cow to the ground. Um, and then he waited for, and he was telling us a story, we were like, oh wow, that's great. And then he waited a few seconds and he said, yeah, but when I would put my hand out for Chisa, he still couldn't do anything to me in Chisa. Um, he said a, one cool story about, uh, which one was it? This lady, one of Yipma's students. Um, and he said one time she got, I don't know this, the whole story, but basically she had a fight with four guys on the street. She was getting abused or attacked by four guys on the street. And he said she left them all... Um, sort of lying on the ground at the end of the fight when she walked off. So, yeah, so the, the women, I mean, all of the, back in the day, as we all know, there was a lot of challenge fires. So Yip Man's school was about, you know, or Kung Fu in general was about challenge fights and getting ready to fight. Well, that's not exactly what it was about, but the practice um, got you ready for challenge fights and stuff because that's how it was back in the day. So, yeah, even the women were very good fighters. So, yeah, so this is it. So this is our... Humble little place. Um, yeah, we've got the knives here. We've got our um, our oil here. One of one of Sigong's um, Sigong students is a Chinese bo uh, bone doctor, bone setter, and he makes these. This is like the iron palm oil. So when we, you know, when we clash with shins, forearms, whatever, you put this oil on to 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 get rid of the injury or to help heal. But yeah, this is it. So yeah, I just wanted to introduce this place to you guys and. Um, and to say that we are very much still here, so I'm here pretty much every night. I'm here, um, well, every weeknight. And, um, and yeah, so uh, some of the seniors are still coming here as well. Um, and if you guys are interested, you know, if you're coming from overseas, it, the school's open to anyone. So the main teacher here is Atong, or his English name is Horace, that's Siegel's son. But I'm still here Monday to Friday helping him out. I'm here for, usually from about 5 till 7, 7.30 p.m. Um, he stays till about 10.30. And on especially Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we've got some of the seniors here as well, people that have been here for, you know, decades, 30, 40 years, that, that if you guys come, can help you teach. So, yeah. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video, and I'll chat to you guys soon.